89.9 KMOJ FM and KMOJ HD1 Minneapolis St. Paul. Bringing unity to the community. 89.9 KMOJ, the People's Station. 89.9 KMOJ, the People's Station. Twin Cities, it is 1 o'clock and it is rainy and gray outside here in the Twin Cities. But right now we're going to bring you some sunshine with the information that we have. It's time for Minneapolis 360 and I've got my favorite person, one of my favorite people here in the Twin Cities, Mr. Anthony Taylor on the line. How are you, Anthony? I am feeling blessed today, Kim. You know, this rain is well needed, right? Because it's been dry and it's been hot. But like you said, we're going to give the sunshine today for folks in the Twin Cities. And you know how you always bring your <coughs> glamorous self to this space. So that's a beautiful thing. How you doing, sis? <laughs> Thank you so much. I am all right. I'm a little tired. I think the gray skies kind of got me feeling a little tired. But other than that, I am doing awesome. How about yourself? I'm I'm well. You know, the thing about it is, is that, you know, it's if, if you're a gardener or you're a planter or you just wake up in the morning and you look outside and your grass is feel like it's been thirsty for years. I think this is a welcome sight, this uh, this rain. And also, too, you know, one of the hardest things I think when it's raining is this is a great nap time for me. So I, <laughs> I look out the window sometimes and wish I could just take a nap. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but I. Obviously, I cannot because it is my favorite time of the day, of the week. It is Minneapolis 360. I am Anthony Taylor, City of Minneapolis, coming to you again bi-weekly Minneapolis, and it is always a blessing. I think the last time I talked with everyone was a couple of weeks ago, and it was actually kind of before the 4th of July, so I want to make sure that I let folks know and, and, and wish everybody a belated happy 4th of July. Uh, I had uh, one of the best times that I've had in a long time. I had a, a friend of mine come up and cooked a whole entire hog, right? So we had a hog roast, and I have never in my life had so much leftover meat in Minneapolis. I'm telling you that it was a, a sight to see. Good food, good family, good friends. So, uh, And I couldn't wait to get back to work to tell folks about it. But Minneapolis, welcome. I want to talk today a little bit about a lot of what we have talked about or I've talked about in the past uh, shows, and I would mention this quite often, and is the fact that we are talking about the effects of COVID. So the effects of COVID had hit this entire world, uh, this entire country and the state of Minnesota and Minneapolis specifically hard and a lot of different reasons. And, and one of the things that, that COVID affected a lot of people was in, in the pocketbook, right? A lot of us could not go to work. A lot of us could not sustain our business. A lot of us had trouble paying for our rent that caused a lot of anxiety and worry uh, in our families. I mean, obviously one of the biggest things when we try to take care of our family is being able to have a household, have a, have a place to call home. So yeah, that's your foundation uh, when you're trying to live and trying to raise a family. And what I want to talk to folks today that I've mentioned before is about Rent Help MN. And Minneapolis, and I've said this before, this is a program that can help renters pay rent uh, if you're behind on rent. I've mentioned it quite a bit because one of the things that we've talked about before uh, Minneapolis is the fact that, and this was a while ago, so if you think about some of the other shows that we had, and I would talk about the eviction moratorium, I said it would come to an end soon, right? We would talk about the governor had extended it, and the governor has extended it, and the governor has extended it. Well, Minneapolis, the governor has ended the eviction moratorium as of July 1st, right? So we need to understand that, right? But as anything that we do and when information comes from any type of government, there's a lot of devil in the details, right? So that doesn't mean July 1st that everybody can get evicted because of late rent. So I've got two people on the line that's gonna talk about that and give us really the details of what this off ramp means, right? And they're gonna get into specifics about it. So listen, I think we all know it, either we are in a situation where we are having trouble paying our rent or we know somebody that is having trouble paying their rent. So I, I need folks to really understand this program. Listen, get your, your writing utensils out to understand exactly what we're talking about. So. What I want to do is introduce two guests to the show, and I'm so glad that they were a part of this program today, is Katie Lopinga from CPED, from the city of Minneapolis, 
as well as Scott Red from North Point. How you guys doing today? And welcome to Minneapolis 360. Doing, doing great. Well, Thank everybody. you. Yeah. Thanks Appreciate for having us on. Yep. Hello. Hey. Thanks, Anthony. Doing good. This is Scott Red. Uh, thanks for having us on. Got it. The connection was a little, little, uh, little bad right there. Katie, are you on too as well? I am on. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? I can, <laughs> yes. Thanks for having All us All right. On. <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Scott, and welcome to the show. This is a huge topic, right? And I, I think, and if, if you heard what I said before, we've talked a lot about Rent Help Minneapolis uh, and what that has uh, entailed. And we've talked a lot about this eviction moratorium ending. Katie, give us really the information, the ins and outs on what this off-ramp means with this eviction moratorium. Sure, thanks. That's a great question. Um, yes, and Rent Help MN um, has been available now for several months, and, and um, it's even uh, more important now that if you are behind on rent that you go to rent, renthelpmn.org and apply for um, this emergency rental assistance that's available. Um, the eviction moratorium has been a safety net um, throughout the pandemic. Um, and as you mentioned, um, there is now an eviction moratorium off-ramp uh, that's in effect as of July 1st. Um, so it ended the, um, the executive order that caused eviction actions and it allows um, it, it begins a process of allowing property owners to terminate leases or file evictions um, so important things to know right now um, is that um, uh, now through October 12th uh, of this year a landlord must provide a written notice at least 15 days before filing an eviction action for non-payment of rent and the notice must provide information about the amount of rent owed and contact information for renthelpmn.org and 211. Um, and uh, until June 1st, 2022, a landlord cannot file or proceed with a filed eviction action for non-payment of rent against a household that has a pending application for COVID-19 emergency rental assistance. So um, it's really important to get an application in to Rent Help MN. That is how you um, access COVID-19 emergency rental assistance, because that is a protection against uh, a, an eviction right now to have that pending application. And I'm, I'm glad you, you said that too, Katie. And I really want to kind of emphasize that. And the fact is that that is your protection from getting evicted. If you file for the uh, Rent Help MN, that's a layer of protection that's afforded to folks, right? Yes, that's correct. Um, that's right. And, and as I said, if, they, if somebody uh, between now and October 12th, um, property owners are required to give a 15-day notice before filing an eviction that also provides information about how to apply for emergency rental assistance through Rent Help MN. Um, but yes, having a pending application um, even if you haven't received your payments yet, having that pending application is, is a protection against an eviction for non-payment of rent um, at, still, even with this off-ramp. We are talking with Katie Topinga, Manager of Policy and Research and Outreach for CPED for the City of Minneapolis and along with Scott Red at North Point. Katie, I want to just get back to you again. So now that we have this, this moratorium, right, it's expired. What are some of the things that you can be evicted for now instead of not, not so we're eliminating the late payment, but what could you be evicted for now? Right. So currently, um, right now, a lease could be terminated, could be evicted for a material violation of a lease agreement, um, which does not include non-payment of rent. So some examples of that might be significantly damaging property or endangering others. Um, um, but, uh, and then the other way you can be evicted right now is if you qualify for emergency rental assistance, and we're going to talk more about the qualifications for that shortly, I think, um, if you qualified for that emergency rental assistance but refused to apply. So those are the reasons uh, right now um, that somebody could be evicted under this off-ramp. 
And I think an important thing, too, is if you have questions, if you receive an eviction notice and you have questions about whether it's allowed, you can get advice uh, in Minneapolis by calling Homeline. Um, and I can give that number out if you'd like me to, Anthony. Absolutely. That, that number is 612-728-5700. Um, and Homeline provides uh, free advice to all renters in Minneapolis. So if you receive a notice um, and aren't sure if, if it seems right at this time, you should call Homeline and get some advice. You can also go to lawhelpmn.org to get advice from legal aid. And, and again, Twin Cities, that number for Homeline is 612-728-5767. And uh, before I ask the next question, I just really want to point on a point out a few things that that you said Katie and, and I think that's important so Minneapolis if we're talking about uh, a protection because a moratorium has lifted being able to apply for rent help MN gives you a, a layer of protection now it doesn't stop you and Katie talked about this from endangering others or significantly damaging property or just any unlawful things that you shouldn't be doing in the first place right but also to refusing to apply for it as a problem so definitely make sure i want that to be kind of focused on a little bit minneapolis when we're talking about what are we going to do in this process because june 2022 is a long time away and i just want to make sure folks understand that now katie tell us who's eligible for rent assistance or, or rent help mn what's the eligibility requirements Sure. So the most basic requirements are that you, first of all, are a renter in, in Minnesota. Um, and then there are also additional requirements uh, related to income, financial hardship, and, and housing instability. So the income requirements, um, the program uh, right now prioritizes applications for people who earn 50% of area median income or below. And that's uh, a household of four making about $52,000 a year. That's, that's what 50% of area median income is. Um, but the program does serve households earning up to 80% of area median income, and that's a household of four earning uh, about seventy nine, about $80,000 a year. Um, and then the program also prioritizes households who've been unemployed for 90 days or more. But again, those are the 50% of area median income and the unemployment are priorities. Um, so if you meet the income requirements, you should, should definitely apply going up to that, that higher income threshold of, of about $80,000 a year for a family of four. Um, in addition to the income requirements, you also um, need to be able to show that you've had some financial impacts due, uh, or had some financial impacts over the last year. So that could be losing a job, having hours reduced or lost wages at work. It could also be things like an increase in medical bills, an increase in internet costs from, from having to work from home where you didn't before, um, or increased food or daycare costs. So those are all um, types of financial hardship you could, could show. And then the mm -hmm. last um, requirement really is that you um, have some risk for housing instability. Um, and that can be demonstrated by stating or showing that you owe back rent or back, to, back utilities or that you have an eviction notice. Um, and then finally, it, the application does not require that you uh, show your immigration status or, or immigration documentation. And that's, that, that's, that's great. And I think you talked about all these hardships. I think a lot of folks have experienced either one or all of these different uh, type of hardships. So I think getting documentation from folks uh, if Rent Help MN needed that, that'd be easy to prove. Uh, last question, Katie, for you before I bring on Scott uh, Red from North Point. How much assistance does this Rent Help MN provide? Are we talking one month? Are we talking two months of rent? Give us kind of the help that, that, that this program will offer folks. Right. Yes, that's one of the real uh, advantages of this program is that um, it can pay for up to 15 months of total assistance. Um, and that it, it can pay for back rent, so rent that is owed and hasn't been paid from, from previous months. Um, it can pay for back rent and utilities that um, households have um, incurred since March 13th of 2020, so basically the beginning of the pandemic. 
so it can pay for back rent going back to that time. And then um, let's say somebody had six months of back rent that they needed paid. It could also pay for up to three months of future rent at a time. Um, so that's another advantage for this program is that you can get some uh, some future assistance as well. It's just that the total assistance cannot exceed 15 months of, of total assistance. And the amount of assistance that can be provided really depends on the individual need of the household. There is not an upper limit um, to what somebody can request. So if you are applying, you should ask for what you need. Um, the, there will be part of the application process is that um, as it's processed, your, your landlord will be asked to verify the amount owed. So just make sure that you're asking for the, the correct amount based on what you owed, but there is no upper limit to, to the uh, amount of assistance that can be provided. And, and that's a beautiful thing, Katie, because I've actually, uh, we've talked about Rent Help MN on the show before, and I, I think folks uh, heard what I said, but I think when you say it, I think it, it, it hits a little bit different because it's coming from you as a person who works closely with this program. Real quickly, though, I got a, a follow-up, Katie. So what, what's the timeline for folks to be able to get money? I, and, and I say that because I know a few people who've applied for that, and they're on the waiting list, and their number was like 4000 and something, right? So is there a realistic timeline? And, and maybe not. I know we averted a, a, a partial government shutdown and things like that, but what, what's a timeline? And if you don't know, that's fine, but just give people maybe a realistic timeline on when they can receive these funds that's a good question and i think um I, i'm not sure that i have a, a an average timeline i know that there you know it, it is taking some time for people to receive payments what i can tell you is that applications are being processed um you know the city has um processors one of uh, which is north point and you're going to hear from scott from north point who are who are actively processing uh, applications at this time. Um, and so um, I know, obviously, if, if people are waiting for assistance, it's, it's hard to hear that. Um, it, it's hard to wait for that assistance, certainly. Um, but that is at least an advantage of the way the moratorium is structured or the, the moratorium off ramp is structured that if you have that pending application in, even if you haven't received the payment yet, you are you still have that layer of protection that being said i know the state is actively working to increase processing times as are um, the city's local uh, processors who we've contracted with um, trying to get through applications as quickly as we can um so um so i i don't know that's not the, the most clear answer but what i would say is that we are um, everybody is working to try to make sure we're getting payments out um, as quickly as we can and, and, and I appreciate you being honest, right? Because I, I think if I'm a listener, that's one of the questions that comes to my mind, right? I mean, great information. I know the process. I know to get on the website. I know about the protection and applying for that, you know, affords me. But, you know, like all, I mean, we want to know when we can expect money. And I, again, you know, we know that, that government doesn't run quickly. But I think that's a question that I think folks who are listening now. Uh, would want to know, right? So, uh, and I appreciate you you answering that question to the best of your ability. And again, Katie, thank you for, for being on today. And I appreciate you giving us this valuable information. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Scott Red from North Point. Brother, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you, Anthony. I am, I'm so glad you're here, brother. And I want to give you this time to, to talk about uh, a lot of this pro this program and the funding that's available too, you know, with all of these municipalities having some type of funding, right? How can somebody apply, and and who really can help me if I need help applying for these these funds, Scott? You know, for residents with um, internet access, what we've been hearing is the easiest way to apply to the program will be by visiting renthelpmn.org. That's renthelpmn.org. But you also can do a paper application. And for assistance doing a paper application, you can call our trusted friends at 211 and they can assist as well. Absolutely, brother. And I, you know, I think people really understand and respect the work that North Point does. And I'm, I'm glad that, that you're on this show too because it's a trusted community partner. 
you know, when somebody goes through this process, right, and, you know, there's a lot of information that, that, that folks need to give and it can be kind of uncomfortable. And, and I get it. I've been through processes like these many times. Right. So what should someone expect, right, to go through this process and then to like just prepare folks to like what documents they need to start to gather if they go through this process, Scott? Sure. So what, what I can tell you here at North Point, what you can expect is someone, uh, when you get someone, is that it's strong communication. Our processors have been trained to connect with our, with our applicants. And to, uh, so one of our values is around compassion and being able to understand what people are going through. I think that's what makes North Point such a great organization. Um, what you can expect to provide is a proof of eligibility. You know, federal guidelines for the program require that your income and rent amounts be documented by submitting paperwork um, with your application. So you have your annual household um, income, your gross income um, for your, from your taxes for 2020, and if you file federal income taxes, your federal income tax form. Certifications of income from other um, assistance programs since January 1st of 2020, such as SNAP, MFIL, or general assistance, and if you don't have those, your annual income be, can, can be certified using um, current pay stubs, unemployment, insurance payments, social security, disability, um, and if you can't get access to your old pay stubs or you get uh, paid in cash, you can attest to your, your income, but you are only allowed up to three months of assistance. Um, you can do your lease. Uh, you have to have your lease and your rent ledger or back rent statements from your landlord and any back due rent notices, um, back due utility bills, eviction notices, or utility disconnection notices. And it, it, it's key to let your landlord know that you'll be applying for this program. They should be able to keep you, um, help you get some of the needed paperwork, and you will need their contact information for your application. Um, which the program required to, because the program is required to contact them. We are talking with Scott Red from North Point, talking about the rental assistance that folks can apply for, some of the loopholes, some of the, you know, the key things that you need to know. And, and one of those things too, Scott, is that, you know, okay, I've, I've, I've got my applicant, I received like all the aid I'm going to get, does, does that money come to me or who does that money come to for me to pay my rent or my utility? That's a good, that's a great question, Anthony. In most cases, payments from this program will be sent directly to an applicant's landlord or utility company. Um, federal guidelines require that a landlord or utility company be contacted to participate in the program. However, if they refuse or are unresponsive, an applicant may receive direct payment um, for their rent or utilities to make the payment on their own. We want to make it as easy as possible for, for the landlord as well as for the, the individual applicant that's renting. And, and I, I think that's important to know, right? I mean, sometimes folks, you know, want to know that too. Like, what does that check come? Does it come to me? Do I pay my landlord? Or does it go to the landlord? And Scott, you're saying that it goes directly to the landlord to try to just make this whole process a lot smoother, right, for folks. That's right. That's right. And we've talked about that too. So, and, and to to be able to, you know, call, you can call two one one. You can always call North Point six one two seven six seven nine one eight eight. You can also apply at renthelpmn.org uh, to make sure that folks have the right information to apply for these programs. Uh, and Scott, you know, as, as we run up against the clock, one question I just want to really <clears throat> be able to ask you is, is, brother, just, you know, tell folks just, just how important it is to be able to have this information and access these, uh, these funds. And why is it important for really folks to, to be able to know what's going on for those protections that are afforded to people, Scott? You know, Brother Anthony, you know, to, uh, here at North Point, we know that home means everything. And being able to help folks not be evicted and not move on to or have to uh, look for another home, because we know the effects that that will cause on, on the community and on, on the in, in individuals, you know, meaning that you, 
you know, you move out, you have, might have to find another school district or another school for your child to go to, and the, the neighborhoods, you know, our, our mission at North Point is um, partnering to create a um, healthy community, a healthier community, and being able to keep play, uh, to keep folks at home in their in their homes and in a place is definitely important. Having this information is a protection to help you stay in your home, to help you continue to be a part of the community that that you know that loves you and that, that wants you there. Um, so having that information will make sure that you're um, that you're able to keep your home and that you're able to keep your possessions and that your children, if you have them, are able to stay in the same school, same school district, and stay you know stay a part of the neighborhoods and the friends that they're part of. So those those are the important things about having this information. And again, it, it, COVID is something that I hope that's in our soon to be rearview mirror that you know we wasn't expecting. And being able right. to have these resources and to have these dollars to be able to keep folks at home is so important to our community. And and I appreciate you saying that, brother. I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, that's exactly what I wanted you to end on because I think that's, you know, your home is your foundation. And I talked about that earlier. And if you're not able to stay, it is so many difficult choices that you have to make regarding that, right? So, and you broke that down really well. So I appreciate you and Katie being on the show today. Uh, be well. And I, I, I thank you and I appreciate you both. Appreciate you much. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have just talked with uh, Katie Topenga from CPED. We've talked with Scott Red uh, from North Point and Kim as we uh, close the show. You know, how, how, how dope is this program, uh, Kim, when you're talking about being able to pay up to 15 months of back That's rent plus an additional three months ahead, right? Now, how helpful is That's that a, to a person a who might be in a situation? It's a blessing. <laughs> That is a real blessing. I mean, this is definitely the uh, the opportunity. And as she said, I mean, it's not even like the criteria. It doesn't sound like it's hard to get at all. It just sounds like, hey, you know, if you get um, evicted from your place, there really was no reason to. If you just didn't fill out this form to be able to get the assistance, then that's on you because, man, they are making it as easy as possible for you to get caught up on your rent and to have a fresh start. So. Man, a fresh start. Like, I mean, anybody who is affected by the pandemic, you know, now's your chance to get caught up and to be able to start back over again. So make sure that you guys go to renthelpmn.org, man. That's important. It's important. And all of these hardships, I think we've all experienced some of these hardships that Katie had broke down, right? And and the and, and and you said it and she said it. The only way that you can, you know, be evicted if you don't even apply for this help. So uh, Minneapolis, again, visit renthelpmn.org or call 211 or 311 or North Point. And I'm going to give you that number, 612-767-9188. Uh, to be able to access those funds. Please, uh, uh, Minneapolis, if you know somebody or you're in that situation, this will be your only protection. And I've, I've said this many times, Minneapolis, that this moratorium will end and it ended, right? So just please, please make sure that you're aware and you're informed. So uh, Sister Kim, make sure you go out there, stay dry. I know you got some type of Gucci umbrella or, you know, that you... <laughs> You got to put, I know you got your Gucci galoshes on. Just make sure you stay dry when you go out there today. You as well, bro. You as well. And it's, and it's always good to talk to you. Minneapolis, be safe and be well. All right, kings and queens. Just now, up next, we've got Mr. Loudmouth himself, Zany K. He's going to bring you home this afternoon. Have a good one. One love, kings and queens.